Oh, hello. Lovely seeing you there. Oh, so many books. That uh, is what I wanted to chat about today. Let's talk about books and other media. So, <laughs> oh, this is actually a stack of books I'm going to read. So prior to my pregnancy, I was one of those people who would finish a book a week, maybe two weeks. But then my concentration and focus just went, went to poop. <laughs> I'll be honest, it went to poop. And so now I just, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying. And we'll see how I do. So one of my big goals this year is to read more or get back into reading. So it's not just reading for the sake of reading, it's reading stuff that really interests me. Um, and I'm just going to go through some of the books that I'm reading and then I'll discuss a few other bits of media. So the big one being podcasts that I listen to because I, I have to drive a lot. <laughs> um, so I've got two Two and, and then a sing, two big stacks of books and then a single book. So the single book is Beowulf, a verse translation. Um, and this was translated by Seamus Haney. I don't know if it'll be any good. The reason I picked a verse translation is a lot of books like Beowulf, the Iliad, the Odyssey, um, even some works from Plato should be read out loud. Um, they aren't, they aren't best read in your head silently, they're best told as a story. So my plan with Beowulf is actually to read it out loud to my daughter starting after her first birthday. So this is something we'll start doing in the evenings right before she goes to bed so she'll get a, a children's story <laughs> and a bit of Beowulf. Hopefully it won't scare her too much but she's really little so fingers crossed. I'll let you know how it goes. I shockingly have never read this despite having reread the Iliad about 20 times. Early Anglo-Saxon literature just has not appealed to me yet but I've decided I'm gonna do it. Yeah. All right so that's my first thing. Next thing is a massive stack of non-fiction. If you were to look in my bookshelves, you would notice it's a massive stack of nonfiction with a little bit of fiction. So I do need to get more into reading fiction, but I really like my nonfiction. So the first book is The Normans. Um, this is an English translation of a French book. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Francois Nouveau's Nouveau's Nouveau? um, thesis. <laughs> um, yeah, it's about the Norman in general, so their history even before they came into the Anglo-Saxon realm, so before 1066, um, which I find fascinating because we in the English-speaking world, that was the big year for us, but the Normans actually had their bigger year before then. So that's what I'm currently reading right now. I've got Zeiten. I think I said that right. I'm having fun pronouncing things today. Um, it is uh, non-fiction but literature about um, a family going through both Hurricane Katrina and um, the US War on Terror. So not my normal reading but I'm gonna give it a go. It sounded interesting. I picked it up at the book bin in um, Salem, Oregon while I was visiting family so might as well give it a go. And then I've got The Black Nile. This is gonna be depressing but I like current history like modern history, modern events, but I don't know a bit where you, I like where you can explain use history to explain current events and what's going on. And the Nile is a fascinating area. Um, it, it's one of those places where some of our greatest and worst things have happened. So 
gonna have a read of that one. And then Jared Diamond Upheaval. So this is kind of, I'd say, sequel-ish to Guns, Germs, and Steel. Um, I'm rather excited. I'm really looking forward to to this, and I like I like his way of thinking, even if you know one of his books was a bit of a mess. Guns, Germs, and Steel is that's a good book. Give it a read if you haven't. Um, and then one of my other favorite good old writers, Paul Ehrlich's The Dominant Animal, which is about human beings. <laughs> he writes a lot of stuff about human beings. He's actually, he was really lovely. I met him when he spoke at my university at one point and uh, I, I basically cornered him. <laughs> yeah, I just think he's, he's so cool. And The Population Bomb was a great book, even if he was wrong with a lot of the the details and you know at the end of the day he's a doctor of population studies not a agricultural researcher so not his fault and then finally mr bill bryson at home and i just enjoy his way of writing so that's where we're going with this one and then we get into the fiction it's hard for me starting easy i actually Every time I go to a used bookstore, my goal is always to buy a single Agatha Christie novel. So I have quite a collection already. I think I have 10 up there and I've read most of them, but let's give this one a go. Can't be that bad. <laughs> I saw this while I was in Melbourne at Minotaur, which is an institution in Melbourne. Um, and it's called The Sudden Appearance of Hope. And it's about a, a girl who everyone's just forgotten. So, well, I thought that could be interesting. Um, next I have the Ancillary series, so Justice, Mercy, and Sword. I've read Justice already, so I need to read Mercy and Sword. So those are two of my big goals for this year. I love the lack of um, gender and sex, uh, as, in, as in XY and XX chromosomes, not as in sex, like two people having sex. Um, but the lack of sex in these books. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just need to finish this. It sounds fascinating. Huge warships with, with thousands of people on them and in space and a lack of, of defined genders. And finally, Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I should probably read that even though this isn't Norse, but it's in the style of Norse mythology before I read Beowulf. Maybe I'll put this on the top of the stack. Let's do that. <laughs> but yes, um, Neil Gaiman is amazing and I actually really enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed most of his work. And the Mongoliad saga was fascinating. So I'm gonna give this one a go, see how that works. And yeah, so that's my reading list for this year. I have my daughter's first birthday my family visiting and a wedding to plan in the next two months. Um, and I've started this YouTube thing. So I'm trying to be kind to myself and not give myself too many books to read. Uh, so just see how I go. I'll put them in some type of order and I'll get back to you and let you know how I'm doing with them at the end of the year. Um, and then podcasts. So I, I drive my little one to swimming and we go to Pilates. <coughs> um, we just go to various things during the week. So I am driving a bit more than I'd like to. Um, so I have quite a few podcasts. I'm actually going to pull up my whole library right now. So I've got The Infinite Monkey Cage, Stuff You Should Know, Rex Factor, Approachable, the Outside Podcast, Titanium Physicist, Science Sort of, The Whale, The Well, I can talk, uh, Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, and On the Green Friend, Fence, and I have a few others that I'm about to download. There's one called Undisciplined that I, I'm going to search for it right now. Undisciplined. There we go. And it's, it's a lot of science. So most of my podcasts are science... There we go. Science base. Got it. Subscribed. Subscribe. There we go. Yay. Um, and I like that because it means that I can learn whilst driving around. 
Um, Rex Factor is by far my favorite. <laughs> I strongly recommend it if you like anything about history. They go through the, the monarchs of England and then obviously the United Kingdom <laughs> and Great Britain. And then they've done Scotland and they're currently going through the Queen Consort Queen and Prince Consorts of England. So it's worth having a look. Um, and then I avoid Audible because I have a strong aversion to Amazon. So I have set up the Borrow Box, which is a way to use your public library card to download books, audiobooks. So that will be my new way of, of listening to books um, to avoid Audible. But I'll still read this stack of books and then listen to another stack of books. So if you would comment down below, <laughs> any other podcast suggestions you have, any other audible book, audio books you suggest, any other books you think I should read, um, yeah, I would love to hear what everyone's reading and looking at and spending time on so that I can have an excuse to watch less TV. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to my slightly rambly books. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, chat and discussion and yeah hopefully I will get some more ideas from the rest of you thank you for your time subscribe if you haven't yet like this video if you enjoyed it and please comment with book ideas thank you bye early anglo-saxon